Got bored away. Needed some change of scenery to keep saying. When I travel, travel anywhere where I haven't gone before. No one wants to go with me? Not a problem. I'll go myself. Holy crap. Am I really doing this? Am I really getting on this plane to go to a place where I know absolutely no one? Why am I doing this again? Oh yeah, I was bored. Welcome to the Solo Trailer's Guide to Cambodia. This episode covers almost all of Cambodia from Siem Reap to Phnom Penh, Kampot, Sanukville, Korong, and Badambang. Cambodia is the poorest country in Southeast Asia, but it has tons to offer from amazing temples in Angkor Wat to beautiful beaches in the islands of southern Cambodia to everything else in between and constantly surrounded by friendly Khmer people. Welcome to Solo Trailer's Guide to Cambodia, starting from the northern border of Thumbs up. I got into Cambodia by buying a boat and bus package from Dondet in Laos to Siem Reap. A 14 hour combination of ferries, buses, and minivans. I'm walking from the border to Siem Reap because of the condition of the roads. Thumbs up! Ferry across the Mekong to get to the other side, and then a minivan from there to Siem Reap. Uh, five hour mini bus ride, cramped minivan from Strong Trong across the Mekong to Siem Reap on the supposed new road. And on the way, I met a fellow soul traveler who I would spend some time with in Siem Reap. Hello, my name is Joval, and I'm a soul traveler from Israel. When you think of Cambodia, you most likely think of Angkor Wat, a massive temple complex and the capital of the Khmer Empire. Millions of tourists of all types go to see Angkor Wat every year, and all of them use the city of Siem Reap as a base for exploring it. If you are traveling through Asia, you've probably seen a million wats already, or temples, but Angkor is the biggest and grandest. Angkor Wat is the name given to one specific massive temple, as well as the archaeological park consisting of dozens of temple complexes. You can get to Angkor Wat from Siem Reap via a bicycle rental, but I got a tuk-tuk ride there and back for $4 per person by going with friends I met at my hostel. The first day, I went on the small tour consisting of Angkor Wat, Bayon, Takeo, Tapram, and a few other temples. Angkor Wat was first started as a Hindu complex by Khmer King Suryavarman II in the early 12th century, but later mixed in elements of Buddhism. Part of the wonder of Angkor is the sheer number of carvings, statues, and reliefs created for every wall, nook, and cranny. Because of Angkor Wat, Siem Reap is the most visited city in Cambodia, with tourists flocking from all around the world, and the city has had some time to adapt to them. It's the only place in Cambodia where there's a street not just known for its pubs, bars, and clubs, but actually named Pub Street.
There's no better way to enjoy Pup Street than on the Sea and Reef Pup Crawl. A pup crawl is a great way for a solo trout to have fun and meet people to have adventure with. Can't, can't start until the finish, the first the so, scout your bear, and you put it on the side and flip it. Smaller bars off of Pub Street offer a calmer drinking and social experience. Besides Anchor One Pub Street, the circus is a fun and unique way to spend your evening. And for just $5, it's a bargain. They come up with a new show and story every few weeks. When I went, there was a story of a wanderer who fell in love with a woman from a village he visited. Before my last day in Siemri, I met George, an English teacher in China from Mexico, who is running in the first ever Angkor Wat Marathon. Yeah. Hi, my name is George, and I'm a solo troll in Mexico. Day 5 in Siemri, a uh, big circuit today with temples. Thumbs up. Hello. Oh, what can I say? Well, since you're not a Mexican, I can say, Esta poca madre esto. Anchor One is mostly composed of volcanic stone and sandstone, brought in about 50 kilometers from here on bamboo rafts and elephants. Watch out for a cheap trick by locals waiting at the entrance of temples telling you a bit of history and showing you the best places to take a photo, and then expect tips. Even the guards at the temples participate in this guilt-laden scam. I think after three days, pretty much all the temples are same, same, but different. In Siem Reap, happy hour is from noon till 7 p.m. So no reason to not have 50 cent pints of Angkor beer along with your fried rice. So here in Cambodia, in Siem Reap, much of tourists come. And there's so many tourists that all the tuk-tuk drivers and massage parlors, they all pester you for your money, for your time, because they want a little bit of that Western money. And in fact, it's so bad, it's even written on their shirts. So. If you can deal with the pestering in Cambodia, you're going to have a great time. And with the prosperity of tourism in a third world country comes those who would exploit others. Children beg for money on the streets and try to sell you cheap souvenirs at Angkor Wat. No. I spent the week here in Samri. It's now time to leave this place. It's so much fun. It's so much to do and see. Now it's time to go to Phnom Penh and see the capital, Cambodia, and the rest of the country. What's up? I got into Phnom Penh late in the day, so I strolled around through the city to take a look at how the locals live their lives and see some monuments. There's not much to do in Phnom Penh besides a few main cultural things to see, like the famous killing fields and a few others, like S21 prison. I, I'm, Lin, I'm from China, so I'm uh, traveling around with uh, Alex. Mm -hmm. 
Right, the camera here. Um, three kills. In the Killing Fields, we went on an audio tour on the atrocities that occurred in Cambodia under Pol Pot and the Khmer Rouge. It's no wonder why Cambodia is in the current state it is in after Pol Pot killed half the country's population, including any and all educated people that could have made Cambodia into a better off country. The killing fields outside of Phnom Penh are a literal collection of small fields of mass graves. While this is not an easy sight to see, I consider it extremely important to visit to understand Cambodia and its people a little better. Transportation in Cambodia is extremely easy, with all sorts of hostels, guest houses, and tour operators offering tickets to any city in the country for cheap. On the bus from the capital to Kempot, I met Sam Hello, from Australia. Hello, my name is Sam from Melbourne, Australia, uh, and I'm a solo traveler. Got myself a scooter bike here in Kempot, Cambodia, driving around nighttime to find some cheap street food, and uh, yeah, gas on the streets and Pepsi bottles. Thumbs up. One leader of their finest. Perfect. There we go. We went into a local Cambodian restaurant slash girly bar here in Kempot. Famous for its peppers. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. <laughs> the thing to do in Kempot is to rent a motorbike for the day and ride up the majestic roads up to Bodkor National Park. Make sure you have 3 to 4 liters of petrol on your bike since there are no gas stations or locals selling any gas on the side of the road in 1 liter glass bottles in the park. Where else would a big Buddha be besides the mountain in Bangkor National Park, Cambodia? abandoned casinos and hotels on top of Bakor Mountain. An eerie mist sets over in the abandoned casino on top of Mountain Cambodia. Welcome to the Twilight Zone.
During the night, we met a few other solo travelers and decided to venture out into this lazy town. Hi, my name is Melissa and I'm a solo traveler from the city. We found dinner and a small nighttime market and carnival. A full day in Kempot is enough to motorbike to the top of the mountain in Bokor National Park and to explore the town at night. And now, it was off to Sinukville. First night in Sinukville, and uh, we go down from around 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. on the way to the beach. We go down, collect free flyers for drinks at bars, and then around 10, 11, 12 p.m. use those drinks, and it's basically like a mini pub crawl for free. Thumbs up! Sinukville contains the only deep port in Cambodia, so the city is pretty industrial. While there is an area containing loads of hostels, guest houses, tourist shops, cafes, restaurants, there's not much to do in the city besides go out to the numerous bars along the beach during the night and sleep in during the day. I only stayed in this town for a day and a night before heading off to Koh Ra, a backpacker's dream of an island off the coast. In Snookville, I prepaid for a few fun dives, which included a ferry ride to Koh Rong and a place to stay for the night. In Koh Rong, I met a few other solo travelers and reconnected with one I met in Kempot. Hi, my name is Stephanie and I'm a solo traveler from San Francisco. Hi, I'm Sebastian and I'm a solo traveler and I live in Ottawa, Ontario. I'm trying to figure out what I like and don't like in this world and if I don't experience things that are different from what I know, how am I going to figure that out? Why does anyone travel? But for me mostly, like, I graduated from university and didn't know what to do and then I worked in a bar for two years and it was fine but I quit and started traveling because I got tired of it. And I now have been traveling for five months. Because I needed it, because I was at the point in my life where I just needed to be on my own, know that I could rely on myself, be independent. Um, I think for some people it's a challenge because uh, they're, not, they're not sure they can be alone. Korong has a beach, a row of guest houses, bars and restaurants, and then the jungle behind it. No roads, no motorbikes, no cars, and electricity powered off of petrol generators. It turns off a few times during the day and night, but the island is so peaceful and relaxing you hardly notice no electricity for an hour or two. It's pretty good. It's like a, it's a good place. I see how people could get stuck here. It's a little bit of it's a little bit like a place where hippies go to die, you know? Like they are escaping their other hippie civilizations and they're starting a new one here. It's like Thailand 20 years ago, and it will be like Thailand in about five years. <laughs> I mean, Koh Rong is incredible. You can walk across the island through a jungle path and then go Indiana Jones, Jones, down, down, Jones style down some rocks, like ropes and shit. And then you're greeted by a seven kilometer beach that's pure white sand with only two sets of bungalows on it that doesn't exist in Thailand. I don't know many places in the world where something like this can still exist, but I mean, like anything, it's been found out now, so. I mean, look at the view right now, and I've been privileged enough to stay on this island for like a week or something, snorkeling and frisbeeing and playing football and shit and eating oranges that cost so little money. In essence, every friend is disposable and indisposable at the same time, because if you love them, if you want to be with them, then you stay friends. Whether you live here, or Sweden, or America, or wherever, if you want to stay friends, you will stay friends. If the person doesn't mean enough to you to stay friends, then you won't. And that's what travel highlights. You know, just in the same way that travel highlights how human we are, it highlights how we work socially. We are with people um, to serve our needs, uh, and also because we want to give to them, and we want to serve their needs. And that works well in travel. It works well at home, it works well all the time. Just briefly arrive, uh, you experience the world together for a little bit and then they go. I think it's beautiful that we can connect immediately like that. I think it's also a little bit sad that we have to, that we get to that point of desperation, but it's part of being a solo traveler. It's a growing experience and it's, it's more beautiful, I think, than tragic. 
Poppy is drinking beer, drugs, beaches, girls, people, amazing people, amazing times. Go around Cambodia. Thumbs up. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. You live in Cambodia. No. <laughs> Are you videotaping me? Yeah. <laughs> It was the most relaxing place I've ever been at, with cheap drinks, a beautiful beach, and certain energy of good vibes feeding off each other to create the ultimate backpacker chill out destination. You can spend a little as a day in Koh Rong, or be sucked in and spend a month. I spent 5 days, and it was time to head to my last destination, in Cambodia, Baden Bam. <laughs> Last stop in Cambodia. Bada bang, bada boom, bada bang. The thing to do is to meet people in the hostel to go on a tuk tuk tour to take you to the Bamboo Railroad. No, no, she tried to find the like for a round trip, you go to come back the same. Okay. Yeah, yeah, round trip, go back. You pay the owner right now, let you go. Please. The Bamboo Railroad is a remnant of Cambodian colonial times. It is a few kilometers long of horribly maintained track with bamboo trains riding on it. The bamboo trains are bamboo platforms sitting on top of axles being powered by a motorbike engine. The only destination is a small village where children try to sell you string bracelets and all the other things. Sam. 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 I saw you number one. <laughs> when two trains meet on a line, one of them just gets disassembled, the other one passes, and then the train gets reassembled. In addition, the Tuk Tuk Tour also included a trip to a mountain where you can hike up to a killing cave, another place where the Khmer Rouge committed their atrocities, and then another cave where you can see a million bats fly out for their nightly hunt. After Bottom Bong, it was time to end my three-week adventure in Cambodia and head to Thailand for my flight back to New York City in a few days after spending a total of two and a half months in Thailand, Laos, and Cambodia. I began thinking what a few friends along the way said about travel and life. First time I came through, I came for 10 days and I hated it. And this time I've been here for a month and I absolutely love it. But I think that was at the start of my trip. Cambodia is an intense country compared to some of the others in Southeast Asia. So I wasn't really expecting much, but now that I'm I have like what traveled and been to the other countries and coming back. I've just so much more that becomes apparent, like how awesome it is. Everyone has so much more of an open mentality and positive mindset, just because, because like at home, uh, here everything is just much more vivid because you know it ends. You know this isn't. It's cliche. It isn't real life. It just isn't. This is not. This doesn't happen. I can't live the rest of my life doing this. And when you go back, those, those moments stack and stack and stack. And this, this will be like a glowing, glowing point in your memory when you're older. You know, you'll remember these types of things quite fondly. If you're traveling alone, I mean, you, you don't necessarily reinvent yourself, but you learn a lot about yourself. But I, it, and even right now, I booked my flight home three days ago. I've got, I don't know, nine days left. And I still don't think I've got it quite yet. I'll, it'll only really sink in what, what traveling means. That five months, almost half a year of my life. What it means when I'm like, you know, I've met all my, seen all my old friends and my family and shit, and I'm a weekend, and suddenly I'm like, oh.
All I know is I'm so, so privileged and very lucky. This should be something everyone else. Just had my last night at Hirabi Dragons Hostel in, where am I? In Bada Bang, in Cambodia. And yeah, that's it. Three weeks in Cambodia has gone by in a flash. Just had my last motorbike ride on the back of somebody else to get here to get to the bus station. It's been good. It should come. Thumbs up.